and welcome to my playhouse and today I have a new battery and I'm gonna play with that and I have visitors I have my cousins and they are here with funny equipment and we're gonna be looking at a dissolvator and see how that works um, on the table I have here a brand new used 12 volt battery and it's an it's kind of an another model it's not the general one to have in your motor vehicle but it's an ADM and I'm not sure what that is. It's something with a glass plate inside of it. I am not gonna be a smart guy on that. But I have borrowed some diesel faders. My cousin has been making diesel faders. There's two of them. One with uh, one coil and a little tiny coil down here. You see that? We can see that. It looks like a resistor, but yeah. We're gonna try this one, it has two coils. Big ones that you can actually see. And we're gonna put it on this battery and we're gonna see on an oscilloscope that my other cousin, Peter, has brought. He is the lucky owner of an Rigol DS1052E. And that's the oscilloscope that you can hack. He hasn't done that one. Of them. You can actually ha hack most, most of I he has not done it yet, which is really weird. I've just turned on the multimeter over here. And I'm just going to measure the, the voltage over this battery before we start doing funny charging things with it. I want to see if, if there's something missing. And for once we have an extra hand. And it says about 12.28 volts. So I'm not sure if I'm supposed to put distilled water in this battery, but we're gonna. It seems to have some openings here. I'm just gonna open it up. And just have a look. It looks like caps that is that can be opened. It doesn't look like they want. They want me to do it, but we're gonna have a try. Let's go. And Peter is opening the battery. They have made these LEDs so that they are easy to screw down. I don't think they're really meant for having to take them up again. Let's see how it looks down there. Oh, there is definitely not enough water in this battery. So we're gonna put in some distilled water. And I'm very carefully removing the. I'm very carefully removing the stickers so that I can put them back on again afterwards and plating them right there. That's a good spot. Cool. Let's see if if this wanna come up. I managed to get off all the LEDs and and it seems to be the same problem in all the cells. This battery does need some more distilled water and luckily we have distilled water right there. I have my syringe and I'm putting in a little bit of distilled water in each of these. And it's, it looks like it's being soaked up down there. So I'm gonna give it a little more. I just emptied two syringes more outside without filming. And we're just gonna measure the voltage again on the multimeter up here. And the voltage has dropped 0.03. So let's put back on the caps. And this package just arrived from China. Cool, five dollars. I remember paying a lot more for it. 
that. So, thank you, China. And it's the battery terminal that I ordered for my battery bank. So, I think I have a pair of scissors right here. Cool. And I was very afraid when I ordered these because they didn't look like they would fit. But um, apparently they fit really well. Mounting these terminals, pretty cool. Brilliant. Well, we kind of changed our minds and we think we are going to try and go with this one instead. Because on this one we can play with the cables. Uh, and it should be very important that the cables is very short. So we're going to try it with these long cables first and then we're going to shorten the cable so they are just long enough to put on the battery terminals. The idea about these diesel filters is that they take the they take the voltage and some current from the batteries and they create a spike and send it back into the battery and it does this at a higher voltage than the than the voltage that it received and it does it by charging up this spool and then Cutting the power to it so that the spool returns that charge in a, from the magnetic fields that that create, and that spike is higher than the voltage that it actually got in, and it does this very fast. We just measured it off camera, and it should be around 1.2 kilohertz of spiking, and we're gonna see that on the oscilloscope in just a little bit. Uh, we're gonna connect it now. I don't know if you're gonna put a power supply on it at the same time yeah let's do that I have right here I have my laboratory power supply and we will supply a bit some voltage let's just say 14 volts 14.15 let's 17 it's an AGM battery so it needs a quite a lot more than an ordinary so 15 volts Almost, not not quite, but close. okay. We're gonna do 15 watts. Probably not gonna do very many amps. Let's see. Just turn that down a bit. Three amps. And let's see. Plus is over here. Let's see if we get a good connection here. There's a nice connection right there. And the meter on the power supply says that the battery is now charging with 3 amps. And let's just put the oscilloscope on that to see if, if there are any spikes from the power supply. And the blue line should be the signal coming in from the power supply. We are measuring it directly on the battery terminals. Have a probe right there. And we're gonna put on the desulfator and we should be able to see something completely different. And now I'm gonna connect this to the battery. Just gonna get that probe out of the way. And it's so inconvenient that plus is over here and minus is over here, but it looks better this way.
and the power supply just gave up. It didn't like that. I returned Corin. Mounted. Let's see if the oscilloscope does anything different now. We decided that we are gonna not use the power supply because the only reason that the power supply is really on is to be sure that the battery is not depleted. That you forget that you have this construction running and deplete the battery below what's good for it. So we're just gonna put on the the probes from for the oscilloscope and let's see the signal over here and this is the spike that comes out of the desulfator and we have set it into average mode so we get uh, average in, uh, this is the spike of 17 volt and this is the 12 volt signal okay and uh, ground is uh, down below so it's plus minus uh, something Yes, you have your um, uh, fundamentals uh, frequencies. But you get quite a peak because uh, uh, you have uh, plus 17, but you get... Uh, um, but is this plus 17.5 volt, is that over the 12 volts? No, that's the total. That's the total. So it's, a, it's more or less a spike of 5 volts. And the frequency, uh, this frequency up here is the frequency of this. Now we are seeing a, a spike on 17 volts. We can get it higher. Uh, the problem is the cables on the disulfator is uh, quite large, so we can get um, amperes from from the inductor. Uh, without, uh, but the, the problem is that the cables have a large capstans that um, take some of the uh, inductance from the. Uh, conductor oh, coil so um, if we ch uh, cut a shorten the cables uh, we should see a higher spike so we're gonna try and shorten the cable to get a higher a higher voltage on the spikes over here so we're gonna do something like this and I'm gonna let my cousin cut the cables because it's his device Cool. Am I a genius or what? Now we're measuring on both sides of the little board down here and the voltage is considerably higher. It's about just under 14, 40 volts, uh, 39.2. So there is a loss in the cables of quite a lot. So why do we want to use a diesel fader on a battery? Well, it's because what happens when you drain a battery is that the acid in the battery reacts with the lead plates in the battery and when the acid does that it leaves clear water back in the cells and that is why that in winter you can actually freeze a battery if it's not fully charged. What happens is that the acid reacts with the lead plates and make crystals and this desulfator kind of hits those crystals so that the, they break and the acid is returned to the water and that should relive the battery and give it some of its old usage back. This method will not reconstruct the batteries to full brand new use but it should make it a lot better than a broken well, battery. Well this kind of concludes this the desulfator is now on the battery and I'm gonna put the battery on the charger. Ooh, it's a heavy one. Hope you got something out of this. And I hope the battery will be really good again. Thank you for watching. Do subscribe to my channel so that you can see me again. Have a really nice day. Bye bye.